On June 12th, the internet hit pause. Discord stopped loading. Spotify refused to play. Snapchat? Offline. It felt like half the web collapsed at once, and everyone from teens on Snap to sysadmins on Slack collectively screamed into the void. What caused the chaos? One silent bug buried in a Google Cloud update. That's right. Behind this meltdown was a small piece of code that ended up nuking traffic across massive platforms. Let's break it down. Oh, and by the way, this video is sponsored by CodeCrafters. They have amazing rewards for you code heads, so stay until the rest of the video to know more. All right, back to the rant. The root of the issue was a new quota policy check introduced by Google Cloud on May 29th. This wasn't some obviously risky change. It was just meant to verify incoming API requests and make sure users hadn't exceeded their limits. But here's the twist. The check wasn't triggered during testing. Why? Because the policy that would have activated it hadn't been rolled out yet. So the bug sat there, invisible, waiting. Then came June 12th, Google pushed the policy live, globally. Suddenly, that dormant code got activated in all 42 of Google's data center regions. The result? A series of null pointer exceptions that crashed the API gateway binaries. Those binaries restarted, crashed again, and got stuck in an infinite loop. This gateway wasn't just some side module. It was core infrastructure. It handled authentication, rate limits, and traffic routing. Once it failed, it was like severing a major artery in the Internet's body. Cloudflare's workers KV, which depended on it, went completely down, clocking nearly 100% error rates for over two hours. Other platforms buckled under the pressure. Google's own tools, Drive, Meet, Gmail, even Calendar, started failing. The shockwave traveled fast and wide. Every service that relied on Google Cloud's API management found itself paralyzed. Now this isn't just about digital inconvenience. Outages of this magnitude come with massive financial costs. Big cloud providers like Google offer SLAs, service-level agreements, that guarantee something like 99.99% uptime. When they fail to meet those guarantees, customers are owed compensation in the form of credits. Sounds fair, right? But here's the kicker. For Google, that means millions in refunds. And more importantly, it's a reputational gut punch. Google Cloud already trails AWS and Azure in market share. Events like this don't help their case. And there's a bigger lesson here. Cloud infrastructure is powerful, but it's also fragile. The tools we use to build our digital lives, whether you're deploying an app or sending a meme, depend on code that has to run flawlessly, at scale, in real time. One misstep, and that trust evaporates. This isn't just a Google thing. It could have happened to AWS. It could happen to Azure. And with AI increasingly writing code, testing every path, even the ones that shouldn't ever be triggered, is more important than ever. At the end of the day, this outage was a wake-up call. It reminds engineers to respect the complexity of the systems we rely on. It highlights the need for fast rollback mechanisms, robust testing strategies, and thoughtful error handling. Because in the cloud, failure isn't just a local glitch. It's global, it's fast, and it's expensive. And that's why you have to keep your skills sharp. And the best way to do that is to make amazing projects like the ones you can craft on Code Crafters, no pun intended. I covered Code Crafters like a million times before, and now I have collaborated with them to give you Code Heads the chance to show off your coding skills and win amazing rewards. I am hosting the Code Heads Community Contest from June 24th to July 24th. You can join by simply using my link in the description and start solving challenges to earn points and the Code Head. With the most points at the end of the challenge, Duration gets to choose one of the following rewards on screen, so hurry up and start coding. Thank you for sitting through yet another tech rant, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to become a fellow Code Head.